with three different kids in three different schools at grade levels. It's a, you know, there's a lot, I have a lot more questions than I have answers. Mine is non-mobile, non-verbal. She has cerebral palsy, cortical vision impairment. She's on a feeding tube. Um, she's, she can't do anything with her hands. She doesn't walk, she's not ambulatory. Obviously, for those kind of reasons, virtual learning is, is out of the question. I've definitely made my decision to do the KCS virtual learning. My daughter lives with autism, and so for her to not be socialized is very detrimental to her. And um, so we need to really do in-person school. My fiance just had a kidney transplant, and my 10-year-old son, is, I don't think he's responsible enough to wash his hands and do what he needs to do like on his own without coaching. So I just, we can't really chance him getting the virus. You know, I'm a fierce advocate for public schools and I would never ever consider homeschooling, but the situation is actually forcing me to not dismiss that. So yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have started considering homeschooling. We are actually deciding to homeschool our children this year. Um, that was the very last thing I wanted to do. <laughs> Believe me, that was not on the top of my list. If I send her back, and then something happens, you know, there's that feeling of, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that. I'm a single mom. I cannot stay home and monitor them. Going back to work in my son's education, so it was just really hard to juggle the two with not being able to be there for six hours to make sure he does what he needs to do with school. I really want the school board to just recognize that this is not a one-size-fits-all. I think the safe decision is to have uh, our daughter um, do online. I want them, I don't want their future, like educational future, impacted by them not learning like they would be at school. If everything goes well and the virus subsides, we can look at hopefully she going back to school in the second semester. Me and my husband had came to the conclusion that it would be best for me to stay at home. I'm also a KCS teacher, so that the, those two worlds overlap quite a bit because, um, you know, based on what we decide for our daughter, we can only we can only afford for her to do the virtual option if I quit my job. I mean, it may be a little tough financially, but we'll work through it. We both have full-time jobs, and so how am I going to balance the three different schoolings. Some people have to work so they have no choice but to see their kids to the classroom. And that is totally fine. I've had friends actually kind of tell me I'm crazy for even thinking of sending mom back. We are very strongly considering the virtual school option because I feel like it's the only remotely safe option. And what if she enrolls in virtual option and she's not doing well, then like, you know, what do I do there? The thermometers, how are they going to make sure they're getting every student as they walk in the door without it taking an hour to get school started? Does the virtual mean that they're literally going to be locked into a computer for four to six hours? I don't think that that they're going to keep it out of the schools. There's no way that they can keep it out of the schools. And what's the contingency plan if an outbreak occurs? How am I gonna provide a place for my child to stay while I work? I'm just not comfortable with what the online school would be. My eight-year-old, he's ready to go back to school. He really wants to go back and be in that classroom setting with his friends, but he just, he, he gets picky. For people to say, well, Children with disabilities just shouldn't go back. Because I've heard that from people who don't know that I have a disabled child. And I just kind of think to myself, you don't have one. My daughter also has a hard time with um, social cues, so I worry about masks. Each individual family is going to have to make that decision because they know their child better than anybody. At the end of the day, we're all in this together. It's just being parents. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer that you make. For me, like, I almost wish that Knox County Schools didn't go back to school at all until the spring. I don't think that they have a good plan in place yet. We're having to weigh things that we shouldn't really have to weigh, in my opinion. I feel like the judgment needs to stop. The bullying needs to stop. People need to consider everybody's different. Every family's different. Every child is different. 
And so uh, it's kind of a, honestly, it's kind of a hellish dilemma for us. Because, I mean, I just really don't want my kid to be the guinea pig of a bunch when, like, he may, he really may get over it in one day, but his dad <laughs> may not get over it. And then, like, if we lose his dad, then that's the head of our family. There's just so many things that we still just don't know. And, and I mean, our, the board and the superintendent don't know. You know, it's kind of like they're making it up as they go, except for now our children are the guinea pigs. And I think um, kids are resilient, but I think we have to be very careful um, with just saying that um, and then actually not checking in um, with them and just going, oh, well, they're resilient, it's okay. Well, we still need to make sure that we're understanding that they're kids. And even though kids that are seniors in high school, we still have to check in with them and, and understand that they may be resilient, but this is still tough and weird and very strange.